Hey, welcome back to Rock Solid Reactions. I'm Pastor Glenn Mustion. And what I've been doing in this series is a reaction to classic rock songs and the truth claims that are often made within those songs. Uh, a lot of rock music is, uh, you know, doesn't have anything to do with truth or uh, meaning or philosophy or any of that kind of stuff, uh, and certainly not theology. But uh, there are some songs, many songs, that really do. They're very profound. And uh, I know that, uh, like many of you, uh, growing up, listening to those songs, I just thought, oh, man, yeah, that is so true. Uh, but, you know, as you get older, you start looking at that truth a little bit and, and deciding whether that's really true. Often I, I found some of the songs to be very profound indeed and found the songs to uh, carry a lot of meaning in my own life and stuff that I was um, relating to on a day-to-day -day basis in my own life. Uh, as I've grown older, though, you know, some of those songs, uh, I begin to really question and uh, see the deception uh, that goes into some of those songs. And so what I want to provide, again, is, is kind of a, a contrast with a biblical understanding of what some of those songs are saying. I just want to do an analysis of some of these songs that have been held up in such high regard. So if you appreciate this kind of uh, reaction to this music, I would like you to hit that subscribe button first of all, and then let me know what kind of songs you'd like me to evaluate, again, with that biblical perspective or that scriptural understanding, and uh, I will react to those. I definitely want to get some Pink Floyd in there, uh, some more Rush, and uh, but if you've got some ideas about some songs you'd like to hear uh, being evaluated with this kind of understanding, uh, please put that in your comments below. So on this episode of Rock Solid Reactions, I'm going to look at the band Led Zeppelin and their, their infamous song, Stairway to Heaven. Um, what can be said about Led Zeppelin that hasn't already been said? If you follow classic rock music, you know that they are just a behemoth. Uh, I was watching a, a documentary about them today where the, it was said that, you know, Led Zeppelin said, forget the 60s, here are the 70s, and here's how rock music is going to be done in the 70s. And it was very um, appropriate, I think, because uh, Led Zeppelin did take us from that psychedelic era and started playing music that was much heavier, much harder and more profound in its lyrical content than the uh, Flower Child the 60s kind of stuff that was going on at the time. It was very heavy and hard hitting. And uh, Jimmy Page's guitar, of course, was the driving force in that. Uh, just an incredible virtuoso guitar player. Uh, the drummer, John Bonham, the lyrics and, and um, uh, vocal stylings of Robert Plant were incredible. And of course, that, that bass line that uh, John Paul Jones drove. It was just great stuff. And um, Led Zeppelin was just an incredible band. And over the course of the next decade, it really uh, produced some of the most memorable hard rock music of, of the entire genre. And so, uh, but today, again, uh, we're going to look at that song that they call the pinnacle of where they were at and what they wanted to produce is this incredible masterpiece, really, known as Stairway to Heaven. And so, as we get into this, uh, I just want to say right off, it's a very, very difficult song to interpret in the way that I'm trying to look at these uh, classic rock truth claims in the sense that... Um, you know, what is the truth that's being purveyed uh, or, or professed in this song? And even Robert Plant himself, the guy who wrote the song, says he doesn't really know what it's about. Uh, he talks about it being a song of hope and, you know, he wanted to make something powerful. He wanted to make something profound. Um, but he really never gave a full on uh, interpretation of what the song is about. 
He just never, he never got around to doing that. And uh, he said from time to time, he, he didn't know what he was really singing about. And he struggled with that uh, as he sang that song. He also talks about the fact that it was a, a strange song that he just sat down and the words just started coming to him. And in a very short amount of time, uh, he wrote the song out. And of course, uh, many will point to uh, a demonic influence being involved in the song or something along those lines. I'll touch on that a little bit as we go. But uh, again, uh, the song itself is held by the, the fans of rock music as a very um, profound piece of music. Most classic rock songs, once you've listened to them, they fade away without having any impact. Then, there are others that transcend music, achieving poetic status and enduring for eternity. Stairway to Heaven, Led Zeppelin's immortal masterpiece, is the latter. Its lyrics are rich with cryptic references to allegories and mysticism, offering far more than the simplistic Satanism that many detractors argue is its main theme. You know, Jimmy Page wrote the, the musical part of it, the instrumental part of it, and the arrangement of the song, and uh, it took him a long time, uh, several years of him putting that all together. And then finally, Robert Plant was handed that, that already uh, masterpiece of music and uh, given the opportunity to write a song that, that tried to, to come to the level of that musicality that Jimmy Page had already put into the song. And uh, he, Robert Plant said that he felt very uh, inadequate uh, to, to try to come up with some lyrics that were as powerful as the song was because it has this building of momentum in the song and finally this incredible crescendo uh, of Jimmy Page's guitar work and the drumming and uh, the bass work and all the rest. In the song itself, Robert Plant says that the words have two meanings. And uh, it seems like the song takes on that, that character as well, as there seem to be two or three or many more meanings going on within the song and, and, and ways that you could interpret that song. I think you'll find, though, as we go through and interpret the song uh, in a biblical sense, again, in a, in a, a scriptural understanding, that um, you could interpret the song as being a, a positive message, but there's also a very dark message that goes along with the song as well. And so we want to uh, try to understand both of those things, I think, as we talk about this song. In the annals of rock history, few songs have captivated the imagination and provoked as much intrigue as Led Zeppelin's Stairway to Heaven. With its cryptic lyrics and ethereal melody, the track has remained a subject of intense analysis and debate among fans and scholars alike. Crafted by the band's iconic duo, Robert Plant and Jimmy Page, Stairway to Heaven serves as a transcendent journey through lyrical mysticism and philosophical reflection. The song's enigmatic verses have often been seen as a canvas onto which listeners project their deepest thoughts and questions about life and death, and man's pursuit of enlightenment. Okay, with that introduction, let's go ahead and jump into the song itself. As I've looked at some of the commentaries on this song and some of the interpretations, I think they miss it from the very beginning, and that is really found in the, the title of the song, Stairway to Heaven. So what are we talking about? We're talking about a transcendency from this life into the next life, uh, into heaven. You know, Robert Plant didn't just make up this idea of a stairway going into heaven. It's a biblical story. It starts with the very core understandings, really, of the Judeo-Christian faith. And that is, uh, Abraham was called out by God and uh, was promised a land and promised that he would become a father of many nations and, and blessings to him and all those kind of things. And so as we follow the path of Abraham and then his son Isaac, and then his son Jacob, who would later be renamed Israel. And so Jacob has this encounter 
in Genesis chapter 28. We find it saying there, uh, he came to a certain place. He stayed there all night because the sun had set. He took one of the stones that of that place and he placed it at his head and he lay down in that place to sleep. In chapter tw- uh, in verse 12, it says that he dreamed and behold, a ladder was set upon the earth and its top reached to heaven. So it's a ladder, not a stairway, but it's the same concept. And there the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. And behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord God of Abraham, your father, and the God of Isaac. The land on which you lie, I will give to you and your descendants. In your seed, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Behold, I am with you and will keep you wherever you go and will bring you back to this land For I will not leave you until I have done what I have spoken to you. Then Jacob awoke from his sleep and said, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I did not know it. And he was afraid and said, How awesome is this place! This is none other than the house of God, and this is the gate of heaven. And so, a very powerful story, obviously, and uh, this is where the concept of the stairway to heaven comes from. So in this uh, song, a stairway to heaven becomes a metaphor for salvation, transcending from this human life that will end to uh, life in heaven. And that is attained, if you look at it through a biblical understanding, that is attained through faith. Uh, The Bible says that Abraham believed God and it was accounted to him for righteousness. And so the only way we achieve heaven is to be declared righteous by God himself. And he determines that those who are declared righteous are those who believe in me. And, uh, and so that's the biblical understanding of salvation in the Old Testament and also in the New Testament. Uh, it, it becomes faith in Jesus and what he has done on the cross Uh, for our salvation later on in the New Testament, but it's the same idea. Again, this metaphor, a stairway to heaven, is uh, a metaphor for salvation. So then, as we get into verse 1, that that gives us some insight into what's being said here in this song, where Robert Plant writes, There's a lady who's sure all that glitters is gold. And she's buying a stairway to heaven. And so from the very beginning, there's kind of a a twist now that she's buying that stairway to heaven. And of course, in a biblical sense, you can't buy that stairway to heaven. Again, you only get it or gain access to that stairway to heaven, salvation, through faith in God who created all things. And uh, and so... um, There is either a mockery of this woman going on here, or it's a symbol of of a greater uh, understanding of what's being said in the song. And I think that's what it is. If you look at the song as a a whole, there's really two things being discussed here. Uh, Materialism, uh, this idea of gaining a stairway to heaven through uh, buying it or having the riches to get to heaven, those kind of ideas. And then there's the spiritual route that uh, Robert Plant talks about later in the song. And so he talks about it in the sense that there's two paths you can go by, but in the long run, there's still time to change the path you're on. And that again, I think is a very positive message in this song and a very biblical message in this song. Uh, The rub is, however, uh, which path he says is the right path and which path the Bible says is the right path. And I I do believe that uh, Robert Plant is choosing the wrong path. In, in this song as he writes it, but we'll get into that later. And so um, there's a lady who's sure all that glitters is gold. And of course, this, this uh, term, all that glitters is gold, is uh, a, a reference to the idea that uh, not all things that glitter are gold. And so not everything that you see is shiny and, and appears to be uh, valuable, it appears to be precious like gold is. 
uh, they're not. This woman is being represented as, uh, you know, a materialistic woman. Uh, when she gets there, she knows. If the stores all are closed, hey, with a word, she can get what she came for. Why? Because she's rich. She's buying that stairway to heaven. And so again, materialism. That is on a base level of the song. Again, I think there's a deeper meaning that goes beyond that. And uh, I, I think to understand that deeper meaning, you have to understand where Robert Plant is coming from. Uh, think about the time frame that we're talking about here and what was happening uh, in our nation. Of course, the, um, the 1960s were this very tumultuous time in our nation and really around the world. And uh, the youth of our nation were departing from a Western uh, philosophy of life and a Western understanding of religious values, uh, Christianity, obviously. Uh, the West is represented uh, in, a, in a religious sense by the Judeo-Christian faith. And so there was a, a grand departure from that Western Judeo-Christian faith and uh, returning to Eastern mysticism. Uh, we know that the Beatles and even the Rolling Stones and, uh, and I think at, at, a, at the core, that's what this song is about. A departure from Christianity, the lady who is represented there. Now, some have said that it's uh, the Virgin Mary. I don't think it's a Virgin Mary because Christianity is represented by the fact that um, the church is called what the bride of Christ the the church is the woman I believe is what is being said here because there is this uh, you know Robert Plant saying uh, when I look to the West you know I I have this feeling when I look to the West and uh, my spirit is crying for leaving I want to leave the West and go to the East and so uh, you have to take that into consideration when you look at the song. When the Beatles journeyed to India, in 1968, the world followed after them, for spiritual awakening in the hands of an Eastern guru. In effect, it inspired people to go East, either physically or spiritually. The Eastern pilgrimage of the Beatles, was oriented towards a Western audience, who were characterized by Enlightenment philosophies, emphasizing a separation between the materialistic and the religious dimensions of human life. Western society as a whole, was facing the disillusionment of Western thought, coupled with social revolution, for which they desired immediate solutions. Mediated through the Beatles, they found that answer in the counterculture movement, and the exploration of Eastern practices, which allowed them to pursue more liberal lifestyles, and mystical spiritual experiences, such as, transcendental meditation. Now, why would the woman, who is representing Christianity, be seen as a materialist? Well, the West has been extremely successful over the years and has become very uh, commercialistic, capitalistic. And so I think there's a, you know, there's this idea that, um, especially from the left, they want to say that there's this Protestant work ethic. And, uh, and that's why uh, Christians feel like they have to work hard in getting into heaven. That idea of the Protestant work ethic. Uh, if you work hard, you get to heaven. And, and I think that's what Robert Plant is bringing in here, that, that phrase, the Protestant work ethic. German sociologist Max Weber proposed that the Protestant work ethic was an important factor in economic success in the early stages of European capitalism. His theory insinuated that because worldly success can be interpreted as a sign of eternal salvation, it was vigorously pursued by its adherents. The Protestant Ethic and the Spirit of Capitalism, 1904. It becomes this metaphor for um, the materialistic, capitalistic, Christian, Western view of things, as opposed to the Eastern mysticism view of looking at things, which is non-materialistic. 
And that is the direction that uh, Robert Plant was going. And that's what's underlying this song, is that Christianity is represented by this capitalistic, materialistic uh, mindset that if you work hard, you get to go to heaven. And that is what he's bringing out in the song. But again, that is not a biblical understanding of Christianity. You don't get to work your way to heaven. You get to heaven, you gain access to that stairway to heaven through faith in Jesus Christ and what he has done. And because of your faith in him, you are declared righteous before God and therefore are granted access into heaven. The Apostle Paul said, By grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves it is the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. Ephesians 2 8 to 9. There's a sign on the wall, but she wants to be sure, cause you know sometimes words have a songbird who sings sometimes all of our thoughts are mishearing. okay so now that we've laid the groundwork we have this lady who thinks all that glitters is gold it's all about materialism working hard making lots of money and that's going to get you to heaven those kind of things again western thought uh, symbolized by the church and the religious beliefs of Christianity. Um, now, from this point on, the next five verses are going to give us um, metaphors that try to convince that woman that she is wrong and convince those who believe that way to come over to this uh, non-materialistic, spiritualized, um, Eastern mysticism kind of uh, way of thinking. It's all about nature. It's all about meditation. It's all about these mystical kind of uh, Eastern religious uh, ways of thinking. And so why do I say that? Well, you find in the second verse here, there's a sign on the wall. Uh, the writing is on the wall, if you will. But she wants to be sure, so because words have two meanings, so she's checking that out and making sure uh, but then these other metaphors start coming in. In a tree by the brook, there's a songbird who sings. Sometimes all of our thoughts are misgiven. Sometimes we're wrong in our thinking. Sometimes we're wrong in our uh, religious beliefs. And we need to give up those religious beliefs and listen to these mystical callings uh, and these uh, songbird in the tree and, and again this naturalistic approach. And so within Eastern mysticism there is a return to nature, a return to naturalistic things and a de-emphasis on materialism. And so we have a songbird in the tree who is singing and saying sometimes all of your thoughts are misgiven, sometimes you're wrong. And, uh, and then he you know, gives us that, um, that phrase, oh, it makes me wonder. He's, he's wondering, are these things true? Should I be thinking a different way? Are all my thoughts that I had in the past wrong? Was I raised with a wrong interpretation of things? I'm wondering about these things. I'm meditating upon these things and uh, considering changing my views. Um, and, and that's what was happening in the 1960s. That's what was happening in this era where, again, Western society was giving itself over to a whole new way of thinking uh, brought about by the uh, Eastern mysticism. Now, uh, you begin to see that not just there, but in, again, the next four verses after this, this feeling I get when I look to the West. He's saying, you know, my spirit is crying out for leaving. I want to leave the West. In my thoughts, I've seen uh, rings of smoke through the trees and the voices of those uh, who stand looking. Uh, those who are already in this West or this Eastern way of thinking, who are standing there waiting for you to come into the, the forest, if you will, with them, 
they are crying out as well. The voices of those who are standing looking at Robert Plant. Um, he says, you know, again, I get this feeling when I look to the West, there's something wrong in the West. And uh, I, my spirit's crying to leave that. I'm thinking about these things. I'm meditating upon these things. And again, the mystical ideas of, of Tolkien come in here, the rings of smoke through the trees. And it's whispered that soon, if we all call the tune, if we all come to a place of unity, uh, then uh, there'll be a new day. Uh, the Piper is gonna lead us to reason. On the rack and the wretched council's bosoms beat as the piper turned from the high street to where the vase rolled its waters right in the way of their sons and daughters. It is unclear as to which piper Robert Plant is referring to. Was it the Pied Piper of German folklore who lured 130 children from the village of Hamelin to their doom? Perhaps, but it's most likely, the Greek god Pan who enticed beautiful young nymphs to his forest lair, with his Pan flute, to have his way with them. Either way, the narrative is all the same, and the results equally tragic. Open wide, as if a cavern was suddenly hollowed. And the piper advanced, and the children followed. A new day will dawn for those who stand long, those who are, who are waiting for this uh, age of Aquarius, right? That's what they were waiting for in the 1960s. That is what Robert Plant is talking about. He's waiting for this age of Aquarius to finally come along with the rest. This, uh, and these are all Eastern mystical uh, ideas, the age of Aquarius. They're waiting for a new day to dawn. A uh, new world order, if you will, a new age. And that's where the new age movement came from. If we get away from these stuffy religious thoughts of the Western world, if we put aside the Bible, if we put aside Christianity and open ourselves up to this new spiritual uh, idea, then we will be set free and we'll, we'll be laughing in the forest together, as he says there. New day will dawn for those who stand long and the forest will echo with laughter. We'll all be happy if, if we can all make this transition to this new spiritual way of thinking. And so that's what this song is about. Um, it's gonna cause problems in your mind, he says, though. So if there's a bustle in your hedgerow, don't be alarmed. You know, if you're, if you're having a hard time thinking about these things and you're upset about them, uh, about these thoughts and about these ideas pulling you into this new way of thinking. Don't be alarmed about that. Just just allow it to happen is kind of the idea. Uh, it's just a spring clean for the May Queen, and we'll talk about that. A hedgerow is a bush. The imagery of this verse is depicting a bush that's shaking from the inside. It refers to the wary feelings of the mind when your belief systems are challenged. The May Queen is an occultist reference, which says that, while you may be alarmed at first, she is simply cleaning out your old ways of thinking, as the spring season cleans out the deadness of winter. The May Queen is the embodiment of the Mother Earth mythology, in all of her fertile glory. The concept is rooted in early celebrations of fertility, planting, and flowers in the spring. The Catholic Church adopted this mystery Babylon heresy, by facilitating the worship of the Blessed Virgin, also known as Ishtar, or Easter, the Goddess of Earth. Yes, there are two paths you can go by, but in the long run there is still time to change the road you're on. It doesn't matter if you're going down that road of Christianity, it doesn't matter if you're, you're going down the wrong path, you still have time, you still have time to come over to this new way of thinking is what he's saying there. And so I, I think it's very clear if you understand it in, uh, in the context of what was happening in the 1960s with the hippie movement, with the Beatles going over to India, with, with uh, all this age of Aquarius, there's gonna be a new age that dawns someday, you begin to see what Robert Plant is saying. 
he says, hey, I want to be on that train too. I want to be talking about those kind of things as well. Uh, that's the path I'm on. You know, later on he goes into, uh, you know, getting into all kinds of Hinduistic thoughts in his own personal life and uh, Zen Buddhism and all the rest. And so um, if you understand it in that way, I, I think it opens up the song and you can really see uh, the path that he's going down there. The Bible speaks about the path of life that you choose as well, and Jesus himself said, Enter by the narrow gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads to destruction, and there are many who go in by it. Because narrow is the gate and difficult is the way which leads to life, and there are few who find it. Matthew 7 13-14 Your head is humming, and it won't go. In case you don't know, the piper's calling you to join him. And then he calls out to that lady, Dear lady, can you hear the wind blow? And did you know that your stairway lies on this whispering wind, this, this spiritual path? That's where your stairway really lies. Not in faith in Jesus Christ, not in faith in God and, and what that Bible says, but it's really on this path of the whispering wind. Uh, these mystical ideas. Uh, your, hum, your head is humming. It, it won't go away because it's bothering you so much is what he's saying there. But again, this piper comes in. The piper is calling you to join him. Uh, a very uh, occultic kind of uh, reference there. So you can see on the faces of the people there, the audience, this is an incredible video. Uh, very emotional. You see them you know, Lifetime Achievement Award, Kennedy honoring them. And uh, it's very emotional and it's very um, well-deserved in a lot of ways. I think uh, it shows you the impact that this song has had, you know, but the, the dark side again is the, the image there in that video is of this almost a church setting where you have a choir in the background. You know, the music is incredibly powerful uh, that video for me is very emotional as I watch that and, you know, just the building of the song and this crescendo, uh, this incredible guitar solo that uh, Jimmy Page did there. Uh, the words are powerful. I mean, it's just a, a very intense uh, moment in the song. Um, but it again has this dark side where it is representing the crescendo of the, the philosophic and religious thought that is being brought out in the song. And that is entering into Nirvana, right? Entering into this uh, new age. Uh, your spirit becomes one with the cosmos is kind of what's being uh, said here. Uh, where do I get that from? Well, it says there, again, on this very intense part of the song, as we wind on down the road, our shadows taller than our soul. Um, it is a picture of this idea of the end of your life. As you come to the end of your life, just as you come to the end of the day, the sun is casting long shadows, is the whole idea. Uh, as we approach the end of our life, our life is casting a long shadow and it's really longer than our consciousness because our consciousness is becoming one with the cosmos. Uh, your individual consciousness is not as important anymore uh, at the end of your life because you just are absorbed into the, the universal consciousness of, of the uh, Hinduistic thought. And at the end of that, we find another lady. That this new lady that's being discussed here is more along the level of the May Queen, the goddess of the earth woman, who is, uh, you know, cleaning out your hedgerow and cleaning out these old thoughts and, and bringing this new consciousness to you and uh, a new way of thinking. That's the lady that we find at the end of the road here, at the end of your life. A lady that we all know, every one of us now knows her, uh, who shines this white light and wants to show that everything is now gold 
Everything is now beautiful. Everything, again, we're entering into Nirvana. We're entering into the, the universal consciousness. We're entering into that age of Aquarius. These are all the, uh, the thoughts of Eastern mysticism. The ultimate end is um, this universal consciousness. And that's why he says, and if you listen very hard, the tune will come to you at last. When all are one and one is all. Again, this universal consciousness. To be a rock and not to roll. And so that's what is real. That is what is ultimately at the end of your life. That is what is um, permanent. So the concept of all is one and one is all is deeply rooted in ancient philosophies such as Hinduism, Taoism, and Buddhism. The idea suggests that everything in the universe is interconnected and there is no separation between anything. It is a holistic perspective that emphasizes the interconnectedness of all things and encourages us to see the world as a unified whole. And so your individual consciousness is no longer that important uh, at the end of your life. Well, so again, uh, obviously that doesn't line up with a biblical worldview, with a scriptural understanding of things. Um, you know, on the surface, the song does have this uh, good, you know, basic moral teaching that materialism is bad and you should search for more of the, the spiritual truth in life. Uh, there's two paths to go by, but in the long run, you can still change the road you're on. Uh, the idea of repentance comes in there, I think, a little bit. Um, you can repent, and that's what repentance means, is stop going down this road, do a U-turn, and come back in the right direction. Uh, but again, I, I don't believe that is the direction that uh, Robert Plant is telling us to go in, uh, whether he consciously understood that or not. I think that choosing the path that Robert Plant is describing in this song is a path that leads to destruction. Uh, it's, a it's a wide path. It's a broad path. It doesn't require you to do anything other than just to give in to whatever desires you have and go after them. And the narrow path the Bible says, as we just quoted from, uh, is, a, is a difficult one. It is a one that is swimming upstream against the path that is going downstream. And, uh, you know, Jesus said, look, you're going to be persecuted for righteousness sake. If you're going to live a life that is uh, set aside for me, if you're going to take up your cross, if you're going to deny yourself and come and follow after me, that is a path that is going to lead to persecution. It's going to lead to hardship. But in the end, it is the path that will lead you to eternal salvation. It is the path that will lead you to that stairway to heaven. And so it is a path of faith. It is a path of following after Jesus and uh, having faith in the fact that he came, he died on that cross, he rose from the dead, he conquered death, uh, and, and that is the difference between uh, Hinduism and Buddhism and these other thoughts, reincarnation and, and all those kind of things, or becoming part of this global or universal consciousness. Um, it is uh, Christianity is teaching that you will be resurrected from the dead because Jesus conquered the grave. He conquered the grave and conquered death. And, and that is why we can have eternal life because of what Jesus has done. And so our faith in him and what he has done through that conquering of death is what allows God to have grace upon us to forgive us of our, of our sins and to accept us into his eternal kingdom forever. And so that is the biblical understanding, not a, a universal consciousness or anything like that. We will still have our individual consciousness. We will still maintain that consciousness that is going to be taller than our shadows, uh, if you will. And so it's an opposite. I had really had a hard time interpreting that because in my mind, uh, our consciousness is what goes on forever. Our soul 
is what goes on into eternity. In the Hindu ideas or the Buddhist ideas, your consciousness is nothing. Your soul is nothing. It just becomes a part of a, a universal consciousness. And so uh, it's very special to me that God uh, loves us so much that he wants us to uh, live for eternity in the same consciousness and soul that we have now, but in a different glorified body that has been resurrected and, and glorified in a, in a way that we can live forever. And so I think there's a, a lot of distinctions to be made there between the two songs. Again, on the surface, you know, two paths to go by, choose the right path, all great stuff. Uh, I think Robert Plant, um, Really, I, it seems like he was a channel to allow this message. You know, they talk about, um, well, you know, they did backward masking on these master uh, tapes. And if you play them backwards, you hear somebody saying, my sweet Satan and all this kind of stuff. Um, I don't really buy into that. Uh, is it uh, Satanistic, you know? Is it a satanic song? Well, on that surface level, no, it's not. On the deeper level, yeah, I think it is a satanic song because it's a satanic message designed to get you to turn away from the path of righteousness that God has created uh, through Jesus Christ and to put you on a path of, of Eastern mysticism and, and transcendental med meditation and all of those kind of things. That is a satanic path. It is a deception. It is a Pied Piper that is trying to draw you away from the true path and uh, lead you astray. And in, in that sense, that is inherently satanic. You don't need to record secret messages into the, the master tapes and then play them backwards to get a satanic message. The satanic message is right there in the song itself. And so I would just say in the end then, uh, if you're on that wrong path, uh, all you have to do is turn around, repent of your sins, ask Jesus to forgive your sins, confess your faith in Jesus Christ and what he has done on the cross and his resurrection, and ask him to lead you in that new path, on the new path, and he will lead you. And so I, I pray that uh, you do that today. And that is a message that uh, remains with you for the rest of your life as you climb into that stairway to heaven that is given to you by the grace of God because of your faith in Jesus Christ. God bless you guys. Uh, I really enjoy doing these. I hope I get to keep on doing them. They take a lot of time out of my weekly schedule. Uh, so I'll probably just do about one a month. But um, I do want to hear from you guys. I want to know, you know, if you like what I'm doing here, if you don't like what I'm doing, that's fine. Just let me know. Uh, if there are other, other songs that you'd like to uh, see me react to, I'd like to, uh, you know, hear you talk about those things and put those things in your comments in the in the comment section there. Uh, please subscribe. You know, I'd like to uh, keep this going if, if it's of interest to you. So uh, please let me know. All right, that's it for rock solid reactions. See you on the next episode.